United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who is on a four-day official visit to Nepal, has a busy schedule today on the third day of his visit. The UN chief reached the Annapurna base camp this morning to take stock of the impact of climate change in Nepal. He will return to Kathmandu after completing his Lumini visit and is scheduled to address the joint session of the parliament at 4 p.m. Good morning, I'm Abhuday Shrestha and these are the headlines of the hour. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres takes a trip to the Annapurna base camp and reaches Lumbini. Guterres is scheduled to address the joint session of the parliament today. More than 1.2 million service seekers making rounds of transport offices to receive driving licenses. License printing halted since the past two months. Government fails to manage printing machines. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu informs Israel will not agree to a ceasefire, saying this is a time for war. Hamas releases a video showing three captive women held by the Palestinian militant group. And Nepal target to win their second consecutive match at the T20 World Cup Asia qualifiers against Malaysia today. Bahrain currently playing against Hong Kong and Singapore facing Oman. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres is scheduled to address the joint session of the parliament today. UN Chief Guterres, who is on a four-day official visit to Nepal, is scheduled to address the joint session of the House of Representatives and the National Assembly at four this afternoon at the Parliament Building in New Baneshwar. With the address of the United Nations Secretary General Guterres scheduled for today, the Parliament Building has been all decked up. After his address, the Parliament will endorse a proposal thanking the UN Secretary General. Parliamentarians have been urged to arrive at the parliament today dressed in official attire. No other agendas have been scheduled at the parliament session today except for the UN Secretary General's address. The UN chief is scheduled to hold a press conference at the parliament premises following his address to the parliament. Secretary General Guterres is scheduled to leave Nepal tomorrow ending his four-day official visit to Nepal. Prior to this, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi had also addressed the parliament during his visit to Nepal. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who is on a four-day official visit to Nepal, had departed from Pokhara this morning and reached Lumbini after landing at the Gautam Buddha International Airport in Bhairava a short while ago. From the Gautam Buddha International Airport in Bhairava, he was taken to the helipad at the Lumini premises by a Nepal Army helicopter. Guterres will be taken to San Santi Deep through gate number four on a special vehicle. He will be welcomed at Lumini by monks. UN Chief Guterres is then scheduled to walk to the Maya Devi Temple premises before offering floral bouquets on the statue of Baby Buddha on the way. Before entering the Maya Devi Temple premises, Guterres is scheduled to plant a tree. Earlier this morning, United Nations Secretary General Guterres reached the Annapurna base camp in Kaski to take stock of the impact of climate change in Nepal. The Nepalese embassy in Israel has said all the 10 dead bodies of the Nepali students who were killed in the October 7 Hamas attack in Israel have been identified. The Nepalese embassy in Tel Aviv has informed that the two dead bodies of Nepali students who were killed in Kibbutz in southern Israel were identified yesterday. According to the embassy, the two dead bodies were identified as that of Rajesh Kumar Swarnakar of Sunsari and Ananda Shah of Dhanusha. Prior to this, the dead bodies of eight Nepali students had already been identified. The dead bodies of Rajan Fulara and Padam Thapa, both of Doti, and Pravesh Bhandari of Salyan are yet to arrive in Nepal. Ten Nepali students who had gone to Israel in the Learn and Earn program were killed by Hamas militants in the October 7 attacks in Israel. The Nepalese embassy in Israel has informed that search is still ongoing for missing Nepali student Bipin Joshi, who has been out of contact since the October 7 attacks. More than 10,000 people apply for a new driving license or renewal of the license on a daily basis. However, due to government mismanagement, those who had applied for a new driving license 13 months ago are still waiting to receive it. Printing of licenses has been halted since the past two months, due to which more than 1.2 million drivers have been affected. Harkabadur Bhandari of Sindhu Palchok is a taxi driver in Kathmandu who had applied to renew his driving license 13 months ago. It is still not clear when he will receive his renewed license. 
Tadings Man Bahadur GC and Satungal Kathmandu's Sriram Ruchal have been tired of making rounds of the transport office in Ekantukuna Lalitpur after applying for renewal of their driving licenses a year ago. Crowds of service seekers have been seen on a daily basis at all the 47 transport offices throughout the country, including those in the Kathmandu Valley. The transport offices say that they have not been able to distribute the driving licenses as the Department of Transport has failed to manage their printing. It used to take around a year to complete the process of printing driving licenses when regular printing was carried out using a mass printer. Now that the supply of cards with electronic chips has run out, printing of driving licenses has been stalled since the past two months. An agreement was made with Mohol Burr Company of Germany three months ago for the supply of 1.2 million cards. However, the government claims that the issuance of driving licenses have been affected as India's Madras security printers, which has been operating the license system, has said that it would take some time for the cards supplied by the German company to be made suitable for printing through the system. Around 6,000 people throughout the country pass the driving test on a daily basis, while around the same number apply for renewal. The demand for driving license is on the rise, but the government has not been able to manage printing machines to cope with the demand. The trend of migrating to urban cities and the lack of opportunities back home that has compelled many youths and even families to migrate abroad has resulted in deserted houses across the country. Out of the more than 7.5 million houses in Nepal, over 600,000 are empty. This is according to the population census carried out in 2021. The National Statistics Office has said most of the deserted houses have residential structure. The detailed report released yesterday also highlights almost 60% of the houses in the country are one-storied with the highest number, that is 84.43%, being in Madhesh province. Likewise, 684,000 households have taken government grants to construct their residential houses. Of the population of 29.164 million, 7.409 million, which is 25.56%, have at least one account in banks or financial institutions. More, for, furthermore, in 12.55% of the total families, which is 836,127 families, there is at least one member with technical or professional education or training. The total number of families in Nepal is 6,660,841. The number of houses constructed exceed the number of families by 891,000. It's time now for our second Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. Here's the question. Why is there constant dispute between the center and provinces regarding jurisdiction? Your options are A, unclear law, B, centralized mentality, and C, lack of coordination. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. The general public can now use the Nagarik app run by the government of Nepal to show their driving licenses if and when asked by the traffic police. Although the government had announced of the facility some four months ago, it had yet to be implemented. The National Information Technology Center that runs the application announced of the implementation yesterday through its social media account. The center has said, barring cases of traffic rule violations, the public can use the app to show the police their licenses. However, in case of questioning by the traffic police for violating rules, the hard evidence would be needed. On 4th of June earlier this year, the Office of the Prime Minister and Council of Ministers had corresponded with the Home Ministry to implement the inter-affiliation mechanism between the Nagarik Application, Transport Management Office and the Traffic Division. The Ministry had then directed the Nepal Police for the same, however, the implementation took time. Any member of public with driving license can use their SIM card number to register the application. In case the traffic police rejects the soft copy of the license, public can call Hello Sarkar through the application itself to register their complaint. In our public voice segment, we have asked people in several provinces what should be done to make government services effective. Let's take a look at what they had to say.
जल्ले आपनो दायित्व बोकेरा बच्चे को था सरकारी कर्मचारी और को रूप मा उन्हें ले स्वयं आत्मला साक्षी रखी काम करनु पड़ने हो एक टी बोनु पड़े कर्मचारी ने योग्य कर्मचारी भरना करनु पड़े पुराने कर्मचारी राखेरो उदाहरण। वाह रुमाने उड़ा सीरियस नहीं सुनो पर इतिहास मेरो देश हो मेरो देश को लागी मायरे के ही रामरो गौरी बने मायरे मेरो देश को जानता है रामरो गौरी बने तो ये चंद आरे माला नहीं होने हो बने कुड़ा से हो। जनता जागनु पड़े हो। सेवा कराई संग एकदम वहाँ ले रामरो तरीका ले बोलनु पड़े राज्य को नीति नियम छून छाई प्रभावकारी रूप में पालन कर कर्मचारी अनलाइन सीस्टम छाई अलग प्रभावकारी बनाने पर्यटन काम प्रति उत्तरदायी होना पर्यटन सरकारी कर्मचारी क्षमता अभिवृद्धि करने कुछ अलग सरकार ने ध्यान दिखने कार्यरत सब साथी काम हो भाई कुरा राजा को काम कल जान काम जस्तु करमचारी तब जनता का काम छिटो छिटो ढंग ईमदारी तापूर्व काम करने कर्मचारी कर्मचारी में अलग नया जेनेरेशन चाहिए कर्मचारी जनता प्रति उत्तरदायी भर जनता सरल सुविधा बट काम काज कर ओपन सीस्टम कर देखे भाई अज प्रभावकारी बीच को मानेला चलखिल नदीन सरकारी सेवा प्रदायक समय अनुसार सीस्टम फलो फलो कर सकने खाले कर्मचारी सक्षम कर्मचारी स्थान दिन पर्यटन इट्स टाइम ना फॉर द इंटरनेशनल अपडेट Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has made clear that Israel would not agree to a ceasefire, saying this is a time for war. Prime Minister Netanyahu saying it would amount to a surrender to Hamas, accusing the Palestinian group of being part of an axis of evil with Iran. Hamas has released a video showing three women who are believed to be captives held by the Palestinian militant group since its terror attack on Israel on 7th of October. The video comes just days after Israeli leaders dismissed talks of progress in hostage negotiations. Meanwhile, Israel's military has said an Israeli soldier taken hostage by Hamas on 7th of October has been rescued. The Israel Defense Forces said Pit Ori Megidish was freed during ground operations in Gaza on Sunday night and was reunited with her family. Israel's military said it killed dozens of Hamas fighters overnight and struck targets in northern Gaza as part of its expanded ground operations in the enclave. Israeli media showed the country's troops atop a hotel about two miles into the Strip. The Israeli military continues to pound the Gaza Strip with air attacks reported near Gaza City, Rafah and other locations across the besieged territory. The Indonesia hospital in Gaza reports a third strike near the facility early this morning, hours after the Turkish-Palestinian Friendship Hospital said an Israeli attack caused damage and injuries. Meanwhile, multiple organizations have expressed concern over the humanitarian situation in Gaza. UNICEF's chief warned of a possible catastrophe due to a lack of clean water. The World Health Organization said hundreds have been killed in attacks on the health sector and UN warned civil order is deteriorating in Gaza with people breaking into warehouses to take survival essentials. At least 8,306 Palestinians have been killed in Gaza in Israeli attacks since 7th of October. More than 1,400 people have been killed in Israel. Sports News. Malaysia are clashing against against Nepal today in, the, in their second match under the ICC T20 World Cup qualifiers. The match is scheduled to kick off at 1.15 p.m. at the Thiruvan University Cricket Ground in Kirtipur. Nepal are aiming to register their second consecutive win at the tournament after thumping Singapore by eight wickets yesterday. Malaysia had suffered a 32-run defeat at the hands of Oman in their first match of the tournament yesterday. Nepal are worried about the injury of all-rounder Dipendra Singh Aidi, who suffered an ankle injury during practice ahead of yesterday's match. Aidi has been replaced by Bibek Yadav in the playing 11. Nepal have not suffered defeat against Malaysia in their last four encounters. Currently, Hong Kong are taking on Bahrain in a Group B match at the Mulpani Cricket Ground. 
Bahrain have given Hong Kong a victory target of 147 runs. Meanwhile, Oman are currently playing against Singapore at the Thruvan University Cricket Ground in a Group A match. Oman have given Singapore a victory target of 175 runs. Meanwhile, UAE will face Kuwait in the Group B match that is scheduled to start at 1.15 p.m. today at the Mulpani Cricket Ground.